Hello and welcome to Fill in the Sink, a podcast from Catalan News. My name is Alejandra Angulo. I'm sitting in for Lorcan while he's raising a child. I'm a journalist living in the beautiful Mediterranean city of Barcelona, but I'm not really from here. I'm on a journey to discover Catalonia, and I hope you can join me. As they say here, the mica and mica son para la pica. Little by little, the sink fills up. This week on Filling the Sink, our producing Kilian Shields heads to Palau de la Musica Catalana to find out more about its architectural secrets. We're going to take you to this magical place and other sites in Catalonia that made it into the UNESCO World Heritage A-List. Even those less visited, the ones that you might not know about. Stay with us. Catalonia a place filled with culture and heritage that go back millennia. The territory boasts many UNESCO World Heritage Sites, most of them located in the city of Barcelona, visited by millions of curious tourists each year. But beyond Park Güell, Casa Batlio, and the Sagrada Familia, there lies an amazing world of historic architecture and beautiful natural landscapes that form the building blocks of the Catalan culture. With an ancient Roman amphitheater, the largest concentration of Romanesque art in Europe, and what could have been a mini Sagrada Familia, there are many mysteries to discover and impressive sights to see in the quieter corners of the country. These are the places you want to explore if you are in Catalonia. So, Kilian, thank you for inviting me to the studio to talk about UNESCO sites. How are things? Ah, I'm great. Uh, it's great to be here. It's great to be talking about some of the, the beauty that's that we find in, all across Barcelona and Catalonia. I know. I'm very excited about this episode. So, you conducted uh, in-depth research on the topic. Uh, could you tell us a bit more about UNESCO sites in, Bar in Barcelona and outside the city as well? Sure, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if we're to talk about the city of Barcelona, obviously it's the capital of Catalonia, so, and I think it's really, really well known for its its architectural value. So if we're to talk about the UNESCO World Heritage Sites in the city, they are fallen into two categories, basically. They're the works of Anthony Gaudí, some of the most famous tourist attractions probably in the whole world, as well as the works of another architect who was a contemporary of Anthony Gaudí, whose name was Lluís Domenech y Montaner. So overall, there are nine in the city, and outside the city, there, there, there's another handful. For example, there's the ancient Roman city of Tarraco. We've also got some of the oldest uh, rock paintings from like the earliest semblances of, of human life on the continent as well. That's uh, spread out all across the Mediterranean basin, but there are a couple of sites which are included in that in Catalonia also. Amazing, amazing. And you have been living here for a while, right? Like six years now? Yep, yeah, it's nearly six years now. It's nearly six time, years. Time so flies. I've had, a, I've had a long time anyway to, yeah. to go and visit these kind of places. But uh, yeah, it's, it's always enjoyable. I haven't been to all of them yet, though. So there's always more to explore. I know. And I was just wondering, do you have a favorite? A favorite UNESCO site in Catalonia? Oh, that's that's very difficult to answer. In fact, um, I haven't been to too many outside of Barcelona, so so most of them, you know, I'm, I'm making my judgment on on the architectural gems that we find here. But I mean, Sagrada Familia is is is, is an undoubted masterpiece. Um, Casa Bayo is is gorgeous, both on the inside and the outside. But I think one thing that like I was really really impressed by was was all of the ancient. The ancient city of Tarraco, which is Tarraco is the, the, the ancient Roman word for the city of Tarragona. So if you go to the very city center of the southern Catalan city, you can find things like an ancient amphitheater, um, like a Circus Maximus that was there where around 2000 years ago, there was there was a huge sprawling civilization that that um, that you can go and visit the remnants of today. That's really, really striking to me. That was that was very impressive. Wait, wait, but before we dive into the ones outside uh, the capital, let's discuss the sites in Barcelona. Perfect, uh, yeah, yeah. So, so I, I moved to Barcelona like six months ago, and the first UNESCO site I saw was, well, perhaps you would like to guess. I mean, a lot of people, when they're coming in off the plane, they might be able to spot Sagrada Familia, so possibly that one. 
Yep. Yep, it w <laughs> I went to see La Sagrada Familia. I know it's a bit of a cliche, but anyway. I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a must do, whether you live here, whether you're a tourist. I mean, you have to at least see, see the outside of it at the very least. Did, did you go inside? Yeah, yeah, I did. Very good, very good. I thought it was the most bizarre thing. <laughs> I mean, I mean uh, don't, don't get me wrong. Astonishing, yes. Uh, but choking at the same time with kind of like these huge uh, tall towers stabbing the sky. Personally, I think it's more impressive on the outside. I mean, the inside's lovely, but um, to me, I, I, I probably prefer wandering around the outside and looking at all the, the sculptures and the etchings that, that, are, that are to be seen on the outside of it. So here's a fun history fact. La Sagrada Familia has been under construction for more than 138 years, and there is no finished date, basically. Yeah, and only in 2019, uh, so 134 years after it first applied, uh, that is when the Sagrada Familia was actually finally given a building permit from the city council. City officials even described it as a bit of an anomaly, an historic anomaly, that it just needed to be fixed. And they finally got round to it in only 2019. Wow, that's unbelievable. You guys actually produced an episode about La Sagrada Familia back in December, right? That's exactly right, yeah. Um, we, we took a look at all of the symbolism that we can see on the outside of it. And this is actually a very important fact to note right now, because right now we're talking about all of the different UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Only the parts of the Sagrada Familia that were completed by Anthony Gaudí are actually those considered as World Heritage Sites, which is only the Nativity facade, only one side of it, and the crypt on the inside. So since then, different architects have sort of taken over, tried to build on top of Gaudí's original vision. But there's a lot of controversy around whether or not um, those architects were able to really follow in, in Gaudí's style, if, the, if what's built now is really um, what he envisaged um, in the first place. But Anthony Gaudí, as we all know, he, he died quite suddenly in 1926. So everything built after that point is not considered a UNESCO World Heritage yeah. Site. This just left me wondering, what is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and what criteria are met? Who decides on this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's true. It's, it's important to uh, clarify that. Um, so basically, in preparation for this, I took a look at the UNESCO website to get the exact definition. Well done, well done. And <laughs> that's important to do. And they say that heritage is our legacy from the past. It's what we live with today and it's what we pass on to future generations. So UNESCO World Heritage Sites, they are places in the world, be they constructed, such as the Sagrada Familia, or something natural, like a, like a landscape, but anything cultural or natural uh, that are irreplaceable sources of life and inspiration for humanity. So in Catalonia, there are, what, like seven works that identify Gaudí's contribution to the development of architecture in the late 19th and early 20th centuries? Precisely. Yep, there are seven. Um, six of them inside the city limits and one of them which is just outside. But it's all grouped together under the name of Gaudí. And those are, as we discussed, the Sagrada Familia, but as well as that, we've also got Casa Bayo, uh, Casa Milá. Both of those can be found on Passage de Gracia. There is Casa Vicens, Gaudí's first work um, in the city of Barcelona. As well as that, we've got the famous Parque Güell, which is one of the busiest tourist attractions probably in the whole world, perhaps. Yeah, I have been to, to Parque Güell. It's, it's really amazing. I mean, you get to see the, the famous salamander that you come across around like Barcelona, also like uh, in tourist shops, it's, it's in everything, basically. <laughs> It is, yeah, yeah. It's so emblematic of the city, isn't it? I think it's really cool for anyone visiting to go on Passage de Gracia and within just a couple of minutes walking away, you can see two of these sites, in fact. Casa Milá, which is also known as La Pedrera. Uh, that's very, very nearby to Casa Bayo, uh, which is obviously another one of the famous, famous sites. Casa Milá is very interesting because there's actually some residents who still live in the apartments in the building. And I'd just like to point out one last thing about the Gaudí pieces. The the Casa Vicens, which is Gaudi's first major work in the city, um, this looks quite different to the rest of them. This looks a lot less modernist. Gaudi is obviously 
renowned for his modernist, his Art Nouveau, very unique style of architecture. But Casa Vicens is, is quite different. It's more closely associated with like an Oriental style or even a, a neo mudejar style of architecture, which kind of harps back to the, the ancient Moorish style of buildings that, that, that ruled over Spain for, for a good few hundred years. Yeah, yeah. And if you wander off La Rambla, I mean, you will find the Palau well uh, decorated in the unmistakable modernist style of Gaudi with iron gates and ornaments, including a very cool phoenix uh, bear sitting on a, on a helmet. Yeah, I really love that. It's a, There's something, something very gothic about it, isn't it? I, I enjoyed that. But just the very last one that falls under the Gaudi category is the Colonia Guave. Yeah, I, I have actually heard about this town. Like, I know that many architects uh, play an, a part in constructing the the fascinating small village that combine utility, labor, comfort. So the crypt that's there, which is located in a town literally just outside Barcelona, it's called Santa Coloma de Cervelló. Um, and this was a bit of a mini Sagrada Familia that, that Gaudí was working on. Um, he had huge plans for it, but of course he died quite suddenly and it hasn't really been completed ever since. But you can see a lot of the same kind of hallmarks of the Sagrada Familia there, just outside the city. So, Kilian, you actually you went on a field trip to a UNESCO site that we haven't mentioned yet. And it's a place not built by Gaudí, not a Gaudí baby. Yes, absolutely. So there are two in the city of Barcelona, not by Gaudí, and those are the Palau de la Musica, as well as the Recinte Modernista, the modernist enclosure of the Hospital of Sant Pau. Both of those were designed by the architect Lluís Domènech y Montaner, and I had the privilege, I had the joy of being shown around the Palau de la Musica Catalana by the head of tours there, who is Merce Mil, and she showed me all around the place, and it was really, really fantastic time. You are so lucky. Let's have a listen. The beginning of the Orfeo Catalá was a group of youngs, a group of uh, young men who were playing guitar and, and other instruments and singing together on a cafe nearby. And they decided to create an association, uh, a choir association, and they named it in 1891 Orfeo Catalá. Okay, but after the problem is that they didn't have a place where to rehearsal, a place where to give concerts. So they decide to buy a little plot. It was in fact the cloister of a church next door. The problem was the money. And one of the reasons why they went so quickly is because they wanted to start with the concerts, picking up, collecting, you know, money from the concerts as well. And the members, at that time they were around 2,000, that's why the capacity is about 2,000 people, um, the members had to pay extra money. So they managed to do it, they asked for money to some rich families as well, but most, most of the money came from, you know, the, the, the singers, the singers and the people who love to come here. The decoration we can see here, it's basically um, nature. It's a constant homage to the nature. They wanted to be always in contact with the outside. So what they did is that after the structure, the metal structure, which, which building is built, all the walls were made out of glass or a stained glass, right? So we have the light coming in all time. It's nice that at night, in the evening, when we have concerts going on, it gets dark. On one hand, we have uh, the seats th divided on three floors. On the roof, as you can see, we have a big skylight. The skylight is like a dome, upside down. The light goes through very, very nicely. And it represents the sun shining. And we have a uh, women choir around the sun, you know. Another uh, decoration which is very important here, and there are the flags, the coat of arms, the flag of Catalonia, the four red stripes in yellow, and the other one is the red cross, the cross of St. George.
if we look at the stage, we can see other decorations. One of the things I prefer are the ladies, the muses of the Palau. We have 19, and they are ladies built by two artists. It's like if they are coming out from the wall, and after we have the lower part, the skirts and the feet and so, this is mosaic of clay ceramic, like many other mosaics we can see around here. So we can see all these ladies that they are playing different instruments. Some very old, some very new, some from popular music, some from classic music. It's a way to say also that all music is welcome here. Not only choirs or orchestras, but everything, every type of music, it's important for us. Lots of interesting facts you learned there, and you get to enjoy MNC music as well, I must say. Yeah, it was, it was, it was fantastic. I think for me as well, just um, it's long been my, probably my favorite building in the city, one of them, but only from the outside. And now, thanks to working on this podcast, I got to see the interior of it for the first time ever. Yeah, I mean, I imagine that it must be amazing to to get to enjoy a concert there, actually. Mm, that's that's my next thing on my list. I've, I've definitely have to get some tickets then to, to, to some concerts and just enjoy that. Yeah, why I can never join you guys on your field trips. <laughs> so let's talk now about the sites outside Barcelona. Sure thing, yeah. Well, like I mentioned earlier on, the ancient Roman city of Tarraco. Um, that was actually the first settlement of the Romans on the Iberian Peninsula. And they very quickly established it as a major economic hub of, of the ancient Roman Empire. That's absolutely fantastic. If, if you walk through the city centre of Tarragona, and I mean, it is right in the city centre. These are not difficult to find at all. You'll be able to find the, the very typical ancient Roman walls that, that we all know and love. But there's so much more than that. There's a Circus Maximus. There's a Forum. There's a, a huge Visigoth Basilica, um, an ancient church. Um, oh, it's just it's, it's, it's a really marvellous thing to, to go and visit. I have read about the Romanesque churches of Val de Boy, um, and it just seems amazing high up in the Pyrenees Mountains, uh, this string of small villages, each with their own Romanesque uh, church, and this group of nine churches make actually uh, one of the UNESCO's uh, World Heritage Sites together for their remarkable level of preservation, displaying clearly the culture that flourished in Catalonia during the 12th century. And also, the largest collection of Romanesque art in all of Europe can be found inside them. Another great one as well, if you want to visit around the, the different areas of Catalonia, would be the, the Poblet Monastery. Uh, this is a very old Catholic Gothic style royal abbey, and it's an enormous monastery that dates back to the, the middle of the 12th century. And this actually played a central role in the history of Catalonia for hundreds of years. It was one of the two royal pantheons of the kings of the crown of Aragon. And this is really cool because all of the ancient kings that are buried there have sculptures of lions sat at their feet, while the queens have dogs at theirs. If, you, if you're interested in visiting that, it's in the county of Conca de Barbara, down in the southern region of Tarragona, South Catalonia. And finally, we have the rock paintings, the oldest of the UNESCO heritage sites in Catalonia. And there are also some of the oldest traces of humanity that exist on the planet. How cool is that? All across the Mediterranean basin, there sits a massive collection of ancient rock paintings made predominantly in caves. Yeah, this one seems really fascinating to me. I haven't seen any of those yet, but I'm planning maybe this summer, maybe do some sort of hike around um, and sort of visit some of these, these ancient rock paintings in the, the natural areas where they're located. That sounds like a really nice plan. So... That's the end. We track you around all the UNESCO World Heritage Sites in Catalonia. But 
Before we wrap up, I was just wondering, Kilian, uh, do you know of any potential candidates sites in Catalonia that you think could become a UWHS? I have been waiting the whole episode to say that UNESCO World Heritage Sites. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like when I was thinking about this, I was I found out the list that do constitute UNESCO World Heritage Sites and just knowing Catalonia as I do, there were a couple of other ideas that came to me that thought, oh God, you know, maybe that could qualify one day or, or why not this place? So like a couple of them that we could speak with is the, the the Ebre Delta, for example, the huge delta at the Ebre River down at the very south of Catalonia. Like that's that's one of the one of the, one of the biggest natural wetlands in all of Europe. And I took a visit there last summer and it's just, it's a really, it's a joyous place to, to go for a walk or a cycle around. It's also where some of the best rice is grown in Catalonia. So we can get some very nice meals down there. Um, another couple of places, well, there's the, the Montserrat mountain range just outside Barcelona. We've done a podcast on that before. And that's that's yeah. the very unique jagged structures that are there in the peaks. That's, that's a sight to behold as well. Um, I really love the Girona Old Town as well. Um, like Girona is such a lovely city to walk around with the ancient Arabats, the Jewish Quarter and the cathedral and all. You can see this clash of ancient cultures here in such a concentrated area. Um, last winter as well, I took a walk through La Fagada den Jorda, which is a natural park up in the north of Catalonia. And uh, this is absolutely amazing to me because there's a whole string of dormant volcanoes there, which I think it's really cool that I was able to walk through and have a little picnic in the middle of a volcano. Wow, that's quite a story. Yeah, was it hot? Uh, no, it wasn't. Thankfully, there's like nice like, grass that has grown over it now. And it's uh, it's just like a very interesting shaped hill at the moment. <laughs> that's, yeah. uh, that's an odd location mm. for a picnic, but it does, <laughs> it does sound very cool. Nice. So we should visit those places next just for research, you know? For research, exactly. Yeah. So time now for our Catalan phrase. Bring it on, Kilian. Sure. Well, this is quite exciting for me because normally I'm doing this podcast with a native speaker, so they are usually the ones who give the phrase of the week. But today it's my turn. Yeah, it's, it's only me and you here in the studio, so... <laughs> so today we have pasar a la historia, which... Hmm, any idea what that means? Oh, make it to history. Yeah, you've got it. It's, it's quite an easy one to guess. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, just to, to become historic, do something of such a high magnitude of achievement that, that yeah, will be remembered forever. That's all we have time for today. Thanks again to everyone that spoke with us. Thanks to you for tuning in. Don't forget to follow us on social media and wherever you get your podcasts. We are back again next Saturday with another episode of Filling the Sink. Until then, from me, Alejandra Angulo, and all of us here at Catalan News. Bye for now. Adeu.